So Frank, what are we doing today? Well, first I gotta clean up the mess. Hey guys, uh, so we got everything all cleaned up here. Uh, got all the rocks off the floor and all the things I don't want to kneel on. So today we're gonna cut the cook chamber doors on this cooker here. So uh, this is a 250 gallon tank. What I'm gonna show you today is first off, there's there's like a few simple steps. We're gonna start off with leveling the tank out, you know, getting it level lengthwise. Then we're gonna go ahead and find top dead center of the tank. Then we're gonna mark this one out for two cook chamber doors. That means a left door and a right door. And uh, then we're gonna probably start cutting on it. So uh, anyway, here we go. So the first thing you're gonna need is a few tools, right? We're gonna have to get this thing level. Now, we all know that nobody's uh, concrete floor is perfectly level. You look here at the, at the level, we're gonna need a torpedo level of some kind. You can use a four footer, but you got these bungs in the way. So for me, this is good enough. But you can look here and see that this thing's out just a little bit on the bubble. Basically, since that's out of level, we're gonna have to like shim this thing or something to get it up. So first off, we're gonna need some shims. And I keep a couple different thicknesses of material around like this. Um, usually I keep them in pairs because you're gonna need one for each foot probably. You know, you're not just gonna level one foot. So like some quarter inch, some 16 gauge is awful handy because you can add this and now you got three sixteenths, right? some kind of thing to pry with. Sometimes this is enough. Sometimes you need to go with the little hooky pry bar, but if you're doing this at home and you don't have a forklift like we do, a big old bar like this here can kind of come in handy because you can get yourself a block and put behind it and lift and level and keep from hurting your back. So I want to tell you real quick about prying things and moving heavy objects, right? That's something nobody hardly ever talks about. So when you're doing something like this by yourself in your garage and you don't have no help, you wanna make sure and keep your digits out from underneath of heavy things, right? So if you saw me, I was kind of reaching off to the side here a little bit when I was sliding that in and I was pushing way back here on this bar as far as I could reach. So in order to make it easier on yourself, if you put the bar way out here like this, you're gonna to have to push a lot harder. If you put this, this block way up here on the bar, then it's super easy to lift. So you're not having to put as much energy into it. So uh, we don't really need gloves for this part. We're gonna lay out the top dead center mark now. We've got our tank level left to right here on the floor. And uh, you know, the, the next part of that is we gotta have a good foundation for making lines on this tank. And so two places that I pay attention to. Place number one is the seam. On one end or the other, just pick one, it doesn't really matter. But wherever you decide to start, personally on a tank, I use the center of the of the weld seam on the head is one, one line that we're gonna work with because you never can tell which edge of this is actually straight, but we know that they did a good root and it's in the middle. So we're gonna use that and then we're gonna find top dead center and that's gonna be like our, our keystone or uh, you know cornerstone of this whole project right there. So uh, what we'll use is a couple of tools here. Let me grab them. Got our center head square. You've seen me talk about that before probably. And uh, I had a level. Here's the level right here. A little torpedo level. We're gonna need a marker. And I got a really cool tape measure that Tom always buys the cool gadgets. I never see this kind of stuff, but this is Look at that floppy tape measure. This thing saves our soul in here when we're marking tanks and stuff like that because it's durable. Um, you can also use a pipe wrap. That's what this is. It's got measurements and stuff on it, but it's not big enough. Then one, one final thing we'll use in a minute is a, is a uh, chalk line. So our tank is level, our cook chamber is, and uh, we're gonna do this on both ends and we're gonna do it close to the seam. The way this works is uh, this thing right here, you can turn, this is called a center head square, and it's for finding the center of a round surface, the top dead center, see here how that works? And then you just get this thing up to where, if you're looking, this edge right here is in the center of the V, and we've got a really good indicator of where the center of this thing is, right? Now all we need is a way to, to tell like where we are vertically. So we take this here torpedo level, I like to get, I like to make sure this ruler here is steel 
and then there's a groove in the middle of this level with magnets and it just kind of that way I can just hold it with like one hand I just got to sturdy it you know and as we move like this that bubbles gonna tilt right now we're just gonna rotate this up until that until that bubble is dead center in that line now this is only going to be as accurate as the four dollar level that you probably purchased we're just going to get to the closest 16th or eighth of an inch you know that's really what we're after here so when you make your arrow like that now we have a starting point now here's the other mark right here in the middle of our seam we're going to pay attention to that line anyway now i'm going to move over to the other end of the tank and we're going to mark top dead center over there Okay, so uh, now we got to make a decision. So we got, we know where top dead center is, but as far as which side to put our doors on, left or right, you know, of the top dead center. So here's the, here's how we do that. We want to think about our cooking environment or our customer's cooking environment, whoever you're building this pit for. How's he going to cook on this thing? Is he going to be standing on it or standing on a trailer, working on the cooker? Is the firebox going to have to be at the back of a trailer? Um, if this goes on a patio, for instance, like is there other equipment around this thing where I don't want the firebox to be next to a gas bottle? So those kind of considerations are how we determine is our firebox on our right side or our left side. For instance, on a trailer, if your firebox is on the right side and the firebox hangs off the back of the trailer, then your doors would be on the driver's side. Now, if this guy's street vending, let's say, that may not be a good scenario because he may have to be parked in the street where he's cooking and he might have to be serving on the sidewalk. So he may want to, to be on the passenger side of the trailer. So once you get that figured out, then you can actually start making some marks on this thing. Anyway, I already cut my firebox notch. So I know that my firebox is gonna be on the right side of my cook chamber. So now we're gonna go ahead, now that we know that, we're going to drop a line down from top dead center where we want our top door cut. So now that we got top dead center, we've got our arrow marks there. So what I like to do is uh, just kind of lay a straight edge, piece of flat bar, anything you got works. Just lay it over your marks like this right here. And I usually try to use either the edge or the center the entire time I'm marking. Then you can take this straight edge and measure down like, okay, well, I've got the edge of this weld is a couple of inches away from the edge of my straight edge so we've got about inch and three quarters right now my process for removing these bungs is going to make me want to have at least a quarter of an inch clear but i'm going to go ahead and pull it on around more than that i'm going to come down like now eh, let's do four that's what i've been doing lately all right now we're going to mark with the floppy tape measure you move over to 10. <laughs> now we can go one, two, three, four, right? How simple is that? Right? Now I can look for 14. Boom. Saves me from doing a whole lot of math. Now you can laugh at me and tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, but I'm fine with that. But hey, somebody out there didn't know that. Uh, we got our mark down at the top door cut. Now we got to pop a line on there this is going to be our this is going to be our for real layout line but everything else we do is going to be based on this line that we snap so you can you hold a camera and do this at the same we'll time see. we'll see how it goes <laughs> hey i bet you snapped a line before huh? oh yeah many a line <laughs> many lines have i snapped ready yes sir so pull tight and then one guy snaps of course you guys probably all did that before so, so now we're ready to start our layout. So what I like to do first is find the dead center lengthwise of where my doors are gonna be. So take into consideration if you need to minus off room for that smokestack. So what real estate do I actually have available for my doors? Then once you know that, which I've got this entire area between these seams available to me for my doors. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be able to use my center mark on the, the center of the seam on each end and uh, decide how much room I've got to work with. So I lay the end of the tape measure there and you can just kind of work your way across or have a buddy hold it. So we got 67 and an eighth. Divided by two, bam. 
So 33 and a half. So now I've got the center of my door layout. Now I wanna have, you can do whatever you want in here. You can do, if you're gonna use a thermometer in the middle, you might wanna make this wider. If you're gonna do door trim on here, you know, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide how wide of a blank space do I want between these two doors. I'm gonna do three inches, but I'm gonna use the Bob method here. Check it out. Three inches this way and three inches this way. Okay, now I have my real estate laid out for my middle section here. So I've got this much room left for a door. The next thing I like to do is I don't want to have uh, this seam incorporated into my door because you talk about a mess. Just try fixing that. We just kind of do like this here. We just kind of lay the tape measure on there, see what we got to work with. That leaves us about, you know, 30 inches to work with if we came up into this. But I want to leave some clearance there. So I'm typically going to go about 29. The thing to keep in mind is, is that my cooking racks, when I build this, I want to I want to know like what are my cooking racks going to be like if I've got slide out cooking racks you may not want to do it this close because you're going to have to fit that that slide rail in there amongst that seam so you might give yourself a little more room I don't want to fight this seam any way shape or form so we're going to do 29 over here on the other side from that mark Bam. So now we're gonna lay out three o'clock on the door. So that's the next decision you gotta make is like, I've got this cooker here. I'm gonna have a baffle plate in there. Say if it's a reverse flow, you're gonna have a baffle plate and a throat opening and all that stuff. So you need to decide like, where's all that gonna land? How much real estate do I have available to me for my, for my bottom door cut? In this case, three o'clock is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and get my center head square out and that's how we're gonna lay this bottom, this three o'clock out. Now there's two ways we can find our bottom door cut. Way number one is we can actually measure around this using the floppy tape measure. We can do like that, bring it around, touch it, come up with our number on the total circumference. And then we can actually divide by four, which will give us a quadrant. Then we can lay out from the top dead center to the three o'clock, basically 12 o'clock to three o'clock, right? Ultimately, in my mind, the most accurate way is just to use your center head square and a torpedo level again. And then once we get one side marked, we'll measure it and we'll transfer that measurement to the other side. So if you make sure that your level's in the center of the thing, right? And you're not riding high on one side or the other, then you just take your, your center head square and your level and set them on here and run it down until you're in the middle of the bubble. And we just make that mark. So now we're going to get a measurement from uh, our top door cut because that's the new place we're going to make all our measurements from down to here. And we're going to transfer that mark in three spots. We're going to do it on the end of this door, there and there. That way when we snap our line, we've got a good accurate mark to just double check everything. With. Okay, so uh, now we've got to establish a vertical line here that's square to lay off our door cuts to make sure our doors don't have like this twist in them when we're cutting them, right? We don't really have a good straight edge to pull from here. So we just use the center of this seam, even though it's not perfect, it's pretty darn close, right? So we're gonna come off whatever this measurement is here to where we made our, our corner mark. Mention 13 sixteenths. So we're going to transfer that mark down here. Now I've got this pipe template. So let's see if it carries over. A good wide rollable surface is really all this is that we can use to get on both arrows. So, all right, now that we got our uh, first vertical cut marked here, we want to at least establish, are we reasonably close to square? So we use the three, four, five method on that. So in this case, you know, we're dealing in inches. We can't do three foot times four foot equals five foot, you know, we can't do that. So what we got to do instead is take multiples of three. So three times three, I'll go the short way on the radius of the tank. Three times four is 12. So we'll go down nine, we'll go over 12. And then between those two points, it should be close to 15. And that'll tell me if this is reasonably close to 90 degrees. Right? So that makes our door, it, that means this line here is within tolerance. All right, 
right, so uh, now we got our vertical lines marked on each end, so we have a, a good straight line to lay off of. We, we've verified that they're square. So I've got my template. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I've got this mark and this mark on for the top of my door. I'm gonna carry that mark down to three o'clock. So, gotta cheat me my bicycle focus. 29. Huh? Yeah. Tom says get it straight. <laughs> 29. So now we're going to use the pipe template to carry that uh, straight line down. Okay, so now the last step is this blue line ain't going to live through a plasma cutter going across it and all that. So I'm going to put a mark on there that I can see. I'm going to make sure that this mark is only where I'm cutting. Thank you.